Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to chapter one. Today we're going to be going over a book called Deathlands. It's a wonderful story about a post apocalypse society. It takes place around 200 years after a nuclear holocaust. And our fun characters have ways to get around Deathlands and its monsters and explosions and all sorts of fun, exciting things. So stick with us. I'm Frank Perrine. I'm Cody Decker. And today it's Deathlands. Yeah. And this was part of our, we had an arrangement uh, where it was, I have to listen to a book or read a book that you really like. And then yes. you have to listen to one that I really like. Right. And this got me into graphic audio because I didn't know that there was a movie play option for books. And this one has it for uh, physical, which is interesting because physical books are very hard to find now. Yes. And it's funny because most of the Deathland fans out there, a lot of them are actually getting the majority of these books um, on audio. So um, it's not that it's difficult to find it, but it's funny. You can go online and search up Deathland's book and you're seeing collections like what's in front of me um, and people selling them. Uh, it, there's a lot of fans out there. So, And the fans out there, just enjoy the ride. So we're going to be talking about some of the things that maybe people might not know to bring them over into Deathlands. Um, and then things that, of course, you guys are probably bigger as experts than I am. Yeah. So, And this, this, this did hit a, a, a note in my, in my heart for a Fallout again. Yes. Just everything that Fallout, Metro, like all those things. Yes. I was like, ah, I want to play those now that I, and think about this series while playing them. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure anyone that has read these books or reads these books, I would think a high percentage of them uh, like the game Fallout. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Because it's, it's you know, it's, it's uh, boy, it's, it's great. Yeah, and it's just great. People don't know what graphic audio is. It's audio books, but each character is played by someone. Because I've heard, I, I, I had a friend like listen to some audio books. He's like, I can't do it when one, when there's a narrator doing the voice right. for everyone, especially they get to go from like this old war general to yeah. now a small child. And it's like, oh, it's too jarring. Well, it's funny. I was listening to a zombie one recently. And when they switched to the old lady, the old lady sounded like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> it was killing it for me, dude. Yeah. I swear. And it was like, and it, I can't even do Winnie the Pooh, but it was bad. Yeah. But anyway, so that's a, an issue. Like check out graphic. Like, it's always like yeah. the only reason not to would be like if you if it's too much money, but it's yeah. worth it. Like I I have bought the audio book, and then I'm like, they did graphic audio. Yeah. Well, I have to get that, and it it is a it's a completely different experience, and mm. this one is only graphic audio. Yeah. Now the art mm, on the newer graphic aud audios is not like the books, but um no. but still <laughs> yeah uh the graphic audio is pretty awesome and today we're gonna be talking about pilgrimage of pilgrimage, pilgrimage, pilgrimage to hell to hell uh which is one of the first books um and i know that all all you guys could actually probably even educate us in certain ways um i got into this series i read the i read one of the first ones um and then i went out and and bought them because i couldn't stop reading them um i think i have 42 of the books uh and i think i have more in my garage but I've read a lot of them, maybe even twice, which I'm sure you guys know uh, of because you've done the same thing. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. They say it's kind of like the, uh, the, the, the Fabio romance book for guys. I, it, the art is kind of does feel like that. That is like, yes. that is my version of seeing a shirtless guy with long hair. Yeah. Is seeing yeah. a squid being stabbed with a samurai sword. Yeah. I'm like, yes. And you guys know which that one, when that is, and it's a great one. Yeah. Um, yeah. This starts on a very high note. I feel there's yeah. a, there's this thing where um, some stories will start on like other characters that you don't know are the main characters yet. I know Six yeah. of Crows was a similar thing, and it is. I do view it as like a, a statement from the author where it's like, if you thought those guys, you you like those characters. Yeah. I'd first of all, they're nothing to me. And now, and so I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen now. That, doesn't that disappoint you though? Yeah, because like you spent all that time in writing and, and selling me, and now it's like. I was I was not happy what happened with Reacher. I I really like that guy. I yeah. was, I was like he's no he's alive. He's, yeah, he's gonna survive. You, you can't do that to me. It's it's uh, in and in, in this book, if you're brand new to Deathlands, um, like I said in the beginning, it takes place a couple hundred years or so after a nuclear holocaust. So there's survivors that have come up and and created uh, baronies and and actually pods of society. 
Um, but along with that, the radiation, you have all sorts of different mutants and all sorts of different things going on. And that alone would be bad. Um, but then there's this underlying uh, whole government like experiments and things they were doing with transporters and time travel and everything like that, that you get into these books that if you, um, if you read outlanders, the second series after this, then you kind of get the idea, but, um, it's, it's, there's so much stuff going on and I, 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 I just couldn't get enough of it. So what did you think of, what did you think of the book? I like, I, I liked how, um, I don't know if this is the, this is the word in my head. It's a it's a raw story. Um, yeah, I could yeah I could see which, that. Which which just means where it's like you know when like gruesome stuff happens and like very like um, brutal things happen. I do view that as like a you know that's like that's hard to like be able to do as yeah. like a writer. So I do view that as like a another statement that like this is gonna tell any everything. Like yeah. when a story will get like yeah these post apocalyptic uh, communities are not all that nice, and I'm like. Yep, that's probably what would happen. And uh, yeah, and I, I think they do a great job. Mm -hmm. I, I think they do a great job with with that because, you know, I, I don't think that sometimes uh, people that read these books and, and, and read zombie stuff, I mean, they kind of get it, you know, but, um, you know, sometimes I'll sit there and think, okay, so what if this really happened? I mean, honestly, I'd probably starve to death. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I would not survive. Because... I mean, you can't get food. You can't do this. So, so all that's out the window. Now you take a time period where you have, you know, a couple generations now that have grown up into this environment. So that's what they know. There is no police. There is no, you know, there's sec men in, in different areas. Um, but most of the sec men are designed to support the town. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's interesting um, how there's similarities in a lot of the baronies, but then non similarity some of them this yeah this is a um a very like i i would like a, a a movie that did this but like again because it was graphic audio i'm like yeah like i would rather have this than a movie that yeah. that, that doesn't do it and i'm sure everyone that follows deathlands um totally agrees with you they made a a, a movie for sci-fi um that uh was horrendous now i don't know if uh, everyone else liked it um, but Tracy Lords is in it and all that stuff, but it is, uh, and it's a shame. It's a shame for the folks at home who don't know who Tracy Lords is. Oh, Tracy Lords is a, an adult film star. Mm. So. Uh, a little bit back in the day, kind of, uh, I don't know if she was on the same as Peter North and Ron Jeremy, but, <laughs> but in that range. Um, so, but the, the movie was, it wasn't as good as I, I expected. Uh, they brought in all the characters and it was kind of weak and but that's just my opinion you guys I mean definitely actually Deathlands people man let me know because uh, you might think totally different but and I do I, I like the um because it starts which was great too because this is my first time doing graphic audio yeah. so it, it starts on kind of like the, you know the the prologue summary of like oh you know in 1982 oh like, that was great and then I'm hearing all these sound effects and explosions oh, and great. music and I'm like Yes, and it did remind me of the feeling of you know whenever a cutscene will play when you like load up a game and you haven't clicked yeah. start yet. It's like oh this th like that works as this like if this yeah. was a game that's the thing that plays if you don't press anything for five seconds. Yeah, and I don't even know if you could just listen to that, but I mean if if people didn't want to listen to the theatrical version, just listen to that. Uh, if you're a Deathlands fan, because it's it's pretty cool, and I think it's funny because we kind of forget about it. Yeah, a after reading so many books. You, you you know it, but it's kind of cool to hear it all again. At least for me, it was. Yeah, I, I yeah, it really put me in the mood because I'm hearing like '80s type synth music. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, I'm gonna like this. I, uh, it's not fair to other things, but if and, and anytime I hear it, I'm like, it, oh, it worked again. But I'm just anytime there's '80s vibes to any music, I'm like, all right, I like it. Yeah, it's like, I I wish I didn't like anything immediately when they did that, but I do. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's just I I really enjoyed that that part of it. I've listened to the audio book probably about six times now. Um, uh, cause, uh, I just love the story and I just love Deathlands. It and is, yeah. So they do pretty good. Yeah. And this was uh, the start of the, the conversation of like, I have a very hard time visualizing things in books. Yeah. Um, because I grew up not having to, 
and so like that's a skill I'm I'm developing. So like I would have to ask like, so wait, what was that monster? Because I was like, that was like a tornado of like teeth. That's all in my head. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and it's like, no, that was like a metaphor. I'm like, oh right, they were describing it. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And what's cool is that I like now from my from my knowledge of it. There's a couple different writers. It's not a, James Ackler. It's all a bunch of different writers um, that have written it. So. Um, but they managed to keep, I've noticed they managed to keep the same kind of vibe. Now in Pilgrims to Hell, you know, that, you know, obviously Deathland readers, there's certain characters that you know that of course are not in it. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the main ones, they do a really good job, um, in Deathlands on building these characters and you knowing them and, uh, the weapons that they use, all the weapons that they use are actual weapons. You can look them up online. Uh, you know, there's an older character that they call Doc, and his weapons are legit. You can go and look them up. And yeah. I always thought that was cool. Did you, you watch Future Weapons, like that uh, that thing on Discovery Channel? Oh yeah. And they're like, this is a lightning gun, and it's like, yeah, that's what do we need that for though? Uh, I never know. I like the Sunbeam one, but then it's like, yeah, it'll it's harmless. I'm like, that's how people get skin cancer. Well, yeah. Uh, and then they have the the what is the the sound one? Yeah. What I don't understand why they don't make more of is the is the those those magnetic guns. They use them like where, a rail guns. Yes. Um, What's up I, with that? I think it. Yeah, yeah I, I, that leads into like a like military grade does not mean it's the best. It means it's the most efficient for how cheap it is. Ah. So a military grade gun means like, oh yeah, we could give this to someone, they could shoot it, and we don't lose out that much if it just ah. goes away. So like rail guns. It's like, well, we wouldn't, you know, there's like a million people you need to like give a rail gun to. And then what if they just drop in and it blows up? Yeah, but imagine a tank. Well, we should work. We should take a note of that. And get like a rail silent. gun tank. Right? Rail guns are silent? Are they? Because it's all magnetics, right? Oh. So it's actually just pushing the projectile down with multiple magnets. They, oh, yeah. Don't they? They have those in this book, right? They're, they're like the turret, rail gun turrets? I don't, I don't know. Oh. I don't remember. I'm sure I will a little bit later. Yeah, well, <laughs> great, yeah. I don't. I remember they're like, oh yeah, a high tech um, yeah. cannon on the their thing. This started I, again like to how this like starts. I like because it has one of the characters who's a, a psychic. I don't, I forget the term they used. Oh, they they uh, well, psyker. It's a muty, mm. and they're um, and uh, they're a doomy. A doomy is someone that actually will see things in the future yeah and he specifically can smell the future yes which i like and i really like the way it was handled yeah. too because you have characters who like don't know and kind of don't care so he's trying to explain it so you as the audience you get your answer right. and then in universe it makes sense why they're having this conversation because right. they're like what do you mean like why can't you just tell us what's around there? he's like no i can't like i can't see exactly what's happening but i can smell that there's going to be an right. issue i don't know what that even means it's kind of like right. yeah he can smell and it's and crazy he, because it's it's so funny. I, I like the books because everyone knows what they are. There's no like, you know, yeah, you have the discrimination and things like that against mutants and, or muties. Um, but uh, everyone knows what they are. And it's like this guy's using this guy, you know, to, uh, well, to set the stage, there, there are um, government holdout places where stockpiles are stocked. So a lot of people have been looking for them. And one of our main characters, Trader, in this book, he's made his whole career on finding one and then finding multiple ones and then trading weapons and everything for, you know, 20 years. And now we're starting in the book where it's 20 years later. Which was so, a, a great um, way to introduce the main cast later. When, oh, Because I, I hear them as like these myth, myth, myth oh yeah characters that i'm like oh and they're like what why are they gonna like pop in every now and then and it's like no and here they are and they're kind of like normal people right so i got to hear their reputation yep. and it, it really added to the effect of meeting them yeah and it's cool because you you even have people in that type of environment have somewhat morals like the guy trader he's been trading weapons for 20 years and now he's starting to realize that maybe that eh, wasn't a good idea <laughs> yeah because now everyone's got you know stinger missiles and all sorts of different things that he traded to them so yeah and it's like yeah they're like so you know like they have good hearts but then one of the stories you also heard about them was they burned down a whole town when they tried to attack yes them to like prove a point or, yes. or make a statement yeah make an example yeah so it's they're it's, not it's, like um yeah, it's it's very what is it what is it what would you call it it's very selective yeah and their humanity 
Yeah, it's um, they're the good guys, but it's still in a world where right. you can't be a good guy. Well, not so much as like our main character. Yeah, right? he uh, what was it? yeah, Jack, Jack, who's like he has like this like yep. um reputation. Like, well, he was kicked out of a settlement. There's only like a couple of things you can do right. to get kicked out of a settlement. It's like even being kicked out but of a settlement comes, carries. But he like, comes from rich family. He comes from like prominent blood in the south. Mm. And they don't get into in this book a little bit about his history, but those that read the book know it. Um, so it's interesting. He somewhat has some morals. His team has morals. Yeah, he's also got an eye patch. Yes, and he lost his eye, and I don't know. Yeah, they explain it in the book. Yeah, kind of his brother, I think. Yeah, he. Yeah, it's a uh, like again. It's just every like you're eighty, like a snake pliskin. Yes, like snake um, I was just like when they're describing characters like that, I'm like, I, I got, I'm getting a smile on my face. That's like, who yeah, I vision. It's doing it. I, I vision, you know, Snake Plissken. Yeah, but <clears throat> but all the characters are so well done, and I and even through the different writers, I, I, you know, that's what makes it. I love it. That was the real surprise too, because there's also you meet another uh, muty psychic or telepath, what or what her ability is. Yes. Um. And then it goes into, like, her, like, understanding of, like, relationships and, like, you know, activities people get into. And I'm like, this was such a mature, like, yeah. what, of even, like, explaining it. To, like, if well, someone read this, I'm like, this is actually, like, people should, <laughs> you, you yes. should section this out yeah. and show it to people. Like, this was such a mature, emotional understanding of these things. And you, yeah. you're you given, like, her, like, life as she's, like, told, like, all these things. Like, this is how you should, you know, if you trust someone, if you do this, you do this. I'm like, that was weirdly heartwarming yeah and she was raised totally different so uh, as a as a uh what a doomy i think it is um but she's different because her, her hair actually she's in touch with you know the whole guy in there all that so which i thought was uh it was interesting like uh yeah, like a part in the book where she's being assaulted she just basically shuts her whole self down yeah that's like a meditation technique yeah. she can do yeah, yeah. which yeah but this story does get into which I noticed the graphic audio dials down um, because I was I was started reading it and I'm like oh there's an audio I'm sorry I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna listen to something uh, yeah and then I'm like wait a minute they I remember that scene got a lot more disturbing yeah it, and and I noticed that about anyone that's of course audiobooks you have abridged unabridged and, and theatrical versions that sometimes they cut things out um, you know from the actual book. Um, for whatever reason, well, this one, it's kind of obvious, but, this, but they didn't cut out a lot of other stuff, you know, um, which I like. So yeah, it, it mostly just like they, they, you know, they still left the implication there, but yeah. they were just like, and we're done describing that now. Yeah. And uh, one of the other characters is a, a guy named doc. Um, and they talk about him in the book, but they don't really go into too much of his, his history and other books they do. Um, but it was another government experiment on time trolling. So they would actually just pick a spot in time and just open up a sphere portal and just pop people in. So do they open like 44, uh, spots in time? No, <laughs> no. Um, but, but, but how it, how it works is similar. So, uh, when you get further into the books, their government has all these different kinds of experimental things going on with this technology. And so when they get Doc from 19 something, um, they kill his whole family in the process of bringing him back. So he, he comes back and he's a little off mm. and then they really can't handle him. And like three days before the whole nuclear shit show, they push him into time. So he ends up showing up in this book mm. and, uh, and they've had him, uh, they've had him for a little bit. And he kind of loses his mind here and there, but I really, I really like the character. I, I don't know which uh, other Deathline books. What's your favorite character? I mean, I would love to hear it. Um, I liked uh, definitely everyone on the trading ship, uh, barge, oh, whatever yeah. convoy. I was yeah. like, yeah, I, yeah, immediate. That that's why, like, I, I, I do view it as a statement from the author when they make likable characters and then they kill yeah. them off after the first chapter, because yeah. they're all like, yeah, you haven't even seen me write a likable character yet. Yeah, the only problem that I had that I've had with the books, and I don't know if everyone else agrees, but um, is that further under the books, the different authors don't have the you know what's to take out a lot of the characters. So we have characters introduced like Jax and, and I think it's Mildred, uh, and she's a cryo 
person that they find in a readout. Oh, like frozen? Yeah. And she had a disease. They froze her and they bring her back. And she's an Olympic sharpshooter. Oh, that's, that, that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And she's a doctor. But it's funny because all of a sudden they bring her back to life. And, and, but, um, but some of the characters, they move in and out of the books by, you know, like Jax gets married and then his Ryan's son he sends off and different things like that. But there's never really any true death to any one of these. Mm. When you figure in an environment like that, I don't know. One of them might be. And I could be wrong. Uh, maybe in the, in the, like I said, I've only read 44 of them. So there might be one that, <laughs> that I stuff really, like that happens. I really like how humble you are about being a fan of the series when you're like, I've only read 44, like 10 times each. <laughs> I I'm open to being wrong. I could, I could have misinterpreted. Hey, hey, but I know how it is. I know that there's guys out there that's read that have read every book and, and multiple times and they could actually say, well, no, this, and I totally respect that because yeah, I'm a fan, but uh, there's some mega fans of this. Uh, you can go online and 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 they sell, the, like as people sell things like this, and oh, here's forty something Deathlands books, and like like Pilgrim to Hell and other books. I mean, they're they go for a pretty good amount of money, and there's a book from the '80s, you know. Yeah, which you know the '80s nostalgia, it's back again. Yeah, so maybe this will get another chance. And what's funny is, is I think I've said it before that you guys have known if you've seen the other ones. If not, go back because they're great. Yeah, what do you? What? Um, uh, the other shows. Yeah, the other shows. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta. But one of the reasons I got into Deathlands, my first book, and then I couldn't find them anywhere, so I had signed up to a book club that was sending me like Jack Ryan books and all these other books just so I can get one Deathlands. So I was I was getting all these other books that I didn't even really care about just to get a Deathlands book. So and like I said, you can't go to Barnes and Noble and find one. Like next time you go to Barnes and Noble, ask them if they have James Ackler's Deathlands. They'll laugh in your face. No, I don't. Well, they laugh in that they laugh way. in my face. I don't. Know. Their eyes laugh at you. Yes, those book people, their eyes laugh. At they you. judge you all the time. Yeah. And then uh, you then you say you want the audio. They really yeah, they would get up. give you that eye. No, they call security. Yeah. Um, this does remind me, and we'll get to this book later. But Mistborn, one of the powers people can, uh, certain people have, is if they're wearing copper, they can store memories in it. So what people oh. do is now this is making me think of that where it's like so they would like read a bunch of books like they would read like, here's every like book we have on on science they would read it they would store it in that and then you like they would just forget it but it's like oh I need to remember about science and oh. then they would access it dude I wish I had that yeah <laughs> just one for each Jeez. of these yeah you know married for twenty five years that would have been a plus yeah just oh no let I'm me like, uh oh, gotta get milk let me, oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me get the let me get the copper band. <sighs> Um, oh, my kid needs to be picked up. Shit. I yeah. lost that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I do like how straightforward this story is, too. Um, and it, some people don't like that, though. Some people say that that's why it's kind of like a romance novel type of thing. Which, as a romance, uh, up, in, up until, like, one weird thing they do at the end that I'm like, I don't feel like you had to do that. Yes. I was like, that was, a, uh, that was like a mature romance in, a, in yes. this world that, like... I, I, I liked, you know, maybe it happened, you know, even the thing of like, oh, it happened to you. This is post-apocalypse. They're like, yeah, they operate yeah. Di under different rules now. You got a whole insight into her mind about it. You don't need an insight into his mind about why he wants it. Yeah. Uh, and, um, I don't, and it was just like, yeah, these are two, like, good, healthy people. This is just what would happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, so you're given an introduction to, like, psychics and, like, how, like, dirty and gruesome people yeah. are where there's, like, and we're going to betray him to steal that and, like, how, like, you know, people will just, like... Cyclops. Yes. Everything. Um, And then, like, yeah, there's, like, a tornado monster thing that, like, comes in. Yeah. And, like, and then... Yeah, I mean, those are... Uh, there's, there's still... There's still tech that survived this long. So there's... In the Black Hills... They want to go, everyone wants, thinks that there's a, uh, a readout out there, a place that has stuff. So they've been sending people there and no one ever comes back. And, uh, the people that come back are all burned and, and, and we'll talk about the, the fog, right? And it's, it's just a defense for this building. And yeah, that was... That was the, pretty cool. That was the cool part, and why I really like how the story opens is you're introduced to all these things from people who don't know, and they right. they only have the mystified version of things. Right. So when the characters find out, like, oh, that was just 
because the character yeah. kind of figure it out too and it's like oh yeah like i don't yeah. know what I, yeah i thought it was a, a just a tornado that had teeth in it that was like that hated people right and then they you know they go into doc you know he escapes and he has the ball bearings that he has and that's what lets people through that thing so yeah, i mean it's really yeah, cool yeah the, yeah the bunny balls what are those things called Bunye balls. Bunye? Yeah. I don't Booyah know. balls? Booyah. 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 Um, yeah, like from there, we're, like, we're then introduced to the girl. The, um, Correct. The, the red-headed psychic. Yes. She's been captured. Her whole village has been captured. You get a, a very dark window into that world and those sides of things that, you know, very believable that that would be the consequence of uh, this uh, setting. Yes. And then like the convoy of these people that all your introduction to them has been... Oh yeah, they they like they have the highest technology in the world. They go town to town. They'll they'll kill anyone who betrays them. Yep. Here's these brutal people, and then they're like, oh, there's someone who needs help. We should help them. I'm like, oh okay, so like yeah, this is also a, a thing that's been mystified to me already. Yeah, and uh, and it, you know me, I'm just part of. I, I just love this stuff. So in my mind, I could only imagine Warwag and Warwag One and mm. and the things that they have is just crazy with, with the graphic t audio too it is like you know they're sitting in the convo and you get to hear like the truck like rolling over dirt and like it really got me into the, like the setting yeah but what like, was the funniest thing about that which part them riding in Warwag. what i don't even know if you caught it uh, maybe i didn't okay i don't know where maybe they got the sound effects from but what was bugging the crap out of me was the sonar ping like they were in a submarine uh <laughs> every once in a while you hear this Bing! And I'm like, why would that be on the war wag? Uh, you think they were just like just sci-fi? Well, we don't have we don't, <laughs> we don't have we don't have a recording of a war wag. So hey, why don't we just use this sub one for? <laughs> oh right, that yeah, that is the thing that like, you do have to get the sound from somewhere. Somewhere so they're just like yeah yeah that <laughs> that was just bugging me. Yeah, well yeah, but, it, it, someone like me, I was like yeah, that's, that's how they must sound. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was funny, and and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people out there are like no, that's something. That's but, what. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. I didn't um, I did yeah and it, it, another aspect I like too is they do talk about how like um yeah we don't have an infinite supply of these things so they're like oh yeah that super high tech no. mines we yes. have it's like okay look don't we can't use all of them so it's like they get by a lot on their reputation too yes which is why they making that statement they did by attacking that town did kind of work because it's like we need them to not know that's the only like high thing high explosive we have left because the rest of them we sold yes. or they're gone but they have a boatload of mouthwash. Yes. That was kind of cool. I like that. It was just like, yeah, we found it. We, we well, found then, yeah, yeah they, they talk about the things they found and you're like, wow. Even, even to the point where their morals, you know, came into play when they found uh, mustard gas, nerve gas. Yeah. That and was, they reburied it. That was a, that I did like that uh, thing. Cause that's like a, something that people are still trying to figure out how to handle like nuclear yeah. things as far as like, how do we communicate to people if we all get wiped out how do we communicate to people that in here is a deadly weapon or in a deadly material that'll give you cancer if you're near it too much what what's well, that's the skull and crossbones and that's oh. what they even sent with uh don't you remember star trek and they uh, sent voyager like voyager they were talking about different things that they would make that even an alien might be able to mm. see and understand i didn't watch star trek oh and that's me because I'm oh <laughs> <laughs> oh but anyway yeah that's my that's uh, old guy <laughs> I, I, I live I love Star Trek I watched Quantum Leap and that's getting rebooted it's probably gonna be terrible really yeah I oh, watched the reboots, whole thing loved it suck. amazing actor well now with money they can actually make a good Deathlands uh, they're actually making a series about Fallout so that's a talk so you never know maybe all of our fans can did, write did write you a, did you read the script to the Fallout movie? No. Yeah, it, it was like, I guess it was just like, oh yeah, they were like contracted to write out a script. But it was like really good. I like oh, it. Oh, that's it, awesome. It, was, it, de it definitely fits more into this than like Fallout. Oh, um, you that's know, it's, awesome. They did a, a fun thing, which is they have the new guy come out of the vault, but then they meet a guy who's like been out in the wasteland for a while and he basically represents the character at the end of the game. And then you have a character okay. represent someone at the beginning. Gotcha. And so, like, the character that, you know, leather jacket, all that, and he's got a plasma yeah. rifle. And then the newbie oh. is, like, good at, like, communicating and, like, oh, cool. So, like, they're, oh, so that's the speech character. That's the, that's the oh, combat that's cool. character. That's the lockpick. Uh, that's what the TV show does. I think it would work. Oh, that'd be pretty Did cool. Did you watch Nuka Break? 
I did not. What is it's that? a fan made um, New Vegas uh, series. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of New Vegas. Uh, the setting of the story. A little bit of both. Yeah, I like. I I play it for Mister House and the Hunting Shotgun. That was that's my favorite. Uh, the Hunting Shotgun in New Vegas, where it's like you can load up different ammo. Uh, I I it's something about that so sad. I'm like ah, it's a robot. Time to load up the pulse rounds. Um, like the junk gun. I love the junk. Yeah. Gun. Uh, yeah. It's just uh. Yeah. I, 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 I found New Vegas. It's actually pretty boring to explore because there's no reward. You'll go into a cave and you're like, that's that's one of the things. I, I found a yeah. stim pack. I mean, like like a good example is, so you're playing Fallout, three or four. I could leave the environment, level one, and I can go where anywhere on the map. And if I hide, I don't really come across things that, I mean, I always come up with things that are going to kill you, but, but you could sneak around and do things and all that's cool. Not New Vegas, New Vegas. The minute you start going in the desert, rad scorpions, you're done. Cazadors. You're done. You're done. Yeah. You're, and you don't have a weapon strong enough to do it. So, so you ha it's almost, it almost rails you like a railed game. If the gameplay was better, like, because that's the thing, it's like the game, it's so limited by the gameplay too, because it's like, it's not, it's not built for you to like sneak around it or be clever. And the terrain is so boring because it's just a desert. But, 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 which by the way, I, I, I went, um, for vacation once a year, I would go to Cottonwood Cove. I didn't realize that until I drove there like a year ago and I was like, uh, this is New Vegas. And there's the, one of the towns, yes. they sell New Vegas merch. Oh, really? Because it's like a, it's like three buildings that it's like on the way there, and it's like I think it's like search camp searchlight or something. Yeah, Cotton and uh, Cottonwood Cove is right there in the. Yeah. They're like yeah, I've been there. Yeah, but, I used to go there all the time. But the thing is, it's different, and not to turn this into a Fallout show. <laughs> but um, what's different about Fallout than New Vegas is Fallout is designed that way, though. That's the thing. I mean, it's designed to be a true open map experience. When Vegas. Yes, it is, but, but I'm a real. You're you. supposed to take this path. It is right. like you could you could take a stealth boy, do the death claw, but then because I'm like, well, then I just skipped like eighty percent of the story if I skipped this section because all that was supposed to happen over there, and after that, it's just all right. Now go get the chip. Yeah, but like Fallout Three, I played till I was high levels before I did any of the story. Yeah, because uh, I just liked roaming around, killing super mutants, and doing all that stuff, and stealing stuff, and and storing it. I enjoyed the game just like that. Yeah, I didn't realize how significant it was until I played Tale of Two Wastelands, where you like you load up the file. It's a program where you load up the files, and it makes th three and New Vegas the same game. Really? Yeah, it's it's very so. You start in Fallout Three, and then at the end of the game, you're like, oh, there's a tunnel here. It'll take you to New Vegas. You get a job as a courier, and then you you get. See, like, that's cool. Yeah, and then like play Fallout Three. Oh, Real fast, but I didn't like the way that they really gave no props to in New Vegas. I mean, I get it. It's so far away, but it's like they didn't really talk about the Enclave. They really didn't, they, you know, not a lot of power armor. But the power armor wasn't developed after the nuclear holocaust, right? It was used um, during. The Enclave developed this. Yeah, we can get We'll, we'll try not to be in this. Yeah, but yeah. the Enclave developed their suit of power armor after. That's why it was a big deal that they still had it. But they were like the only group able to do that. Right. But, but, but that technology would still be all around the country. Yeah. So that, that's the thing that they kind of wanted to create something totally different and just kind of, in my opinion, strip that part away. And I didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I just noticed in three. If you went to a cave, you'll find a skill book, you'll find an item, you'll find a web, you'll yes. find something that makes it worth it. But in New Vegas, I would be like, it's no point going there because like last yeah. time I went to a cave, there was like, we got you a, a legendary level varmint rifle. I'm like, I don't, that's not worth it. I have to spend resources to do this. Like, uh, I don't, I can't do it. You want a skill? I want, can I have a skill book? No, like, no. I got you. We got five skill books in the game. Now, if you could imagine... I would love if they came up with a Deathlands game. That would be ridiculous. This and that's why, like this, ridiculous. This fits perfectly for it. Metro Exodus specifically, yes, might be the closest to a Deathlands game that I'm yeah. aware of because that's like they're on like a road trip. You played Exodus? Yes. Yeah. Best the ending. I was like in tears. Yeah. Um, that, that that's that's a close one to the really the good. vibe. I mean, the closest to stickies that you have are ghoulies. Really. Yeah, I really like the yeah the yeah. one of the main like um, human monsters. I guess the yeah was they, the term. It, well, it, they don't even know where they come from. Well, they kind of explain it later in books, but um, yeah, and it's it's this bald. You never know. We might have a picture of it. 
We definitely should right here. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, it's these humanoid creatures that have no mouth. Um, yeah, like big little eyes. slit noses. Yeah, little slit noses. Kind of like the grays. Yeah, and, uh, and have suckers on their hands and can rip your skin and your face off yeah. with these suckers. And people don't even know how to eat. And different legs like that, and yeah, I I really like because your your introduction to that was it. Your introduction to them is the the next chapter is from its point of view. Yeah, yeah. It, I I really like the way it plays with that because yeah. your introduction to like the the main human characters was like yeah. legends about them, but you're yeah. just given a sticky. And in my my head for a while they were the Abe Sapiens. Yeah, uh, they looked like Abe Sapien. Um, and yeah, like that you yeah the. The threat they pose and like yeah. how like how he's like a kind of like an animal and you get into his head, which helped like seeing it where he's just like, yeah, get me to, I'm gonna get the girl. And he's just, yeah. He's, and what's funny is when I first read the book, I remember thinking, um, not that the writer was lazy, but I'm like, how do you not know where these things come from? How would you not know? Um, and it's funny they kind of get into it where they they just started showing up with this guy and and later in books there's one. There's one where this guy ends up controlling armies of them. And uh, it, it's just insane because they're throughout the whole book. And, and it's, it's crazy. I like the, um, the way that, like, because, you know, uh, so, so the, 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 the traders, what's their group name? The caravan. Uh, oh, I don't it's Trader. It's just Trader, yeah. yeah. Um, they call him the Trader. Um, so they're, like, they're having a fight. And you see, like, you know, they're, like, they're doing good. Like, don't let them know we, we're, we're well on ammo. Um, you know, kind of, you know, I, I, I really like that, that they have to play with the reputation. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh no, it's a sticky. And you just see like the, the thing says like, oh yeah, they just like slapped its palm on the window and then like it used the sticky goo from its hand to stick bombs to it. Like, and there's just like nothing you can do to take it off. Yeah. And it's like a huge threat when those come in and you know, and on the enemy team they they have to do a similar thing where they're like, oh, we ran out, we're out of, we sent all of our stickies. Yeah. And what's crazy, if you haven't read Outlands, of course, that takes place after this series, like a couple hundred years. Um, there's, there's a scene where you see a sticky and he's kind of like with everybody. He's kind of, it's just, it's hanging just a dude. Now. <laughs> and it's like, it's so crazy. Cause it's like, I love how the writers um, will, will think of evolution and think of those things and put them into the, in, into the books. Uh, I think it's really clever how they do that. That All was right. the thing that stuck out to me in Jack and Daxter. I don't know if you played those, um, but that has time travel in it. Oh, in the first game, you fight. There's like these beast men. Yeah, that's like kind of like a gorilla, but like red, and they like tribal. And then the second game, you like you go to like a different world, and then you just this is a guy who's like, I know, I just sell stuff. <laughs> I'm just a trader. Like he's like, oh, where I come from, like yeah. You, you were like just mindless beast like right. well, okay like i don't know why you would say that right you know I, that's kind of rude to tell me that you thought that's pretty funny yeah that is pretty good. funny that's uh, pretty cool i want a jack and daxter movie but then we'll get to that yeah um yeah but I, the, go ahead no, I, no uh you know everybody i mean like i said i i i was and i'm assuming but i was assuming that a lot of people that might watch this are already vested in the series if you're not i highly recommend it it's not a crazy book like War and Peace or anything. It's an enjoyable read. Um, and if you like that type of time frame, and you'll love it. Yeah, these are these are each around 300 pages, which in audiobook usually translates to eight hours, I think. Yes. And so, yeah, that's... And I think you can read a, a, a 300 page book. That's like a... It's like four hours of reading because you can read yeah. faster in your mind than you can listen. So yeah, very like this is like a thing to like go to the park and read. Oh yeah, uh, which I'm trying to do, but I just I'm like I don't want to drive. Oh dude, when I was reading these, I had one in my pocket all the time, all the time. My yeah. back pocket, any downtime, doop, I was reading. No. This is yeah, this is a good um, length book to like jump in. And, it's, and yeah. you were telling me like each book kind of handles a different thing. So, like, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to it at the end. We'll get okay. to that. So let's finish. Yeah. yeah so they're fighting. Yeah, stickies. so they're fighting the stickies, but they're they're they originally had made a deal with uh with this really piece of crap guy that ran this town um to sell him weapons. And that was such a dark um, yeah. setting where you're like where you're to, like people have to they go into like it's kind of like the, those work villages thing where yeah. it's like 
you're you're in debt, so you have to work, but you're never going to be able to you're never gonna pay your off. debt. And then it's like your wife you, will get be taken, put in prostitution. With people your kids. will people will come home and their family is yep. gone, and then they'll go to a brothel and find out that's where their wife is. Yep. It's just like, uh, and then they go to the mine to try to make up enough money to buy her, but they never buy her, and then they end up forgetting about her and just now working at the mine and coming and getting drunk and it's, just the saddest. The way that they set that whole thing up, it you know shows you how bad this new world is yeah and why it's called deathlands yeah so i thought it was ironic yeah it's just something else <laughs> something else because there's a picture of a daisy i'm like oh well, that's good oh deathlands daisy <laughs> and you'll find those in every cover but you guys know that if you don't on every cover that you see you should see a deathlands yeah, daisy which does yeah i i do like the um i like whenever a character does something that i don't agree with because it helps me remember that this isn't um that because that that's what stops the character from being like a uh, generic, right? When you have a a character who like isn't just the, the supposed to be the stand-in, right? So whenever they're like, oh yeah, no, we have to make this trade. There's nothing we can do. I'm like, okay, I yeah. get it. I get it. I don't like it. But. And the, the stickies had nothing to do with the guy in the town. The stickies had to do with this mutant guy that everyone wants to take trader stuff and his convoy. So he just by hands had a bunch of stickies with him. So he decided to try to take out the traitor and ended up not faring and so he, well. He basically gambled his entire like, right. army, town, squad, whatever right. you call that, on that trade, on the traitor, and he lost that gamble. Right. And like, as he's but like, they lost half the weapons that they were going to trade to this other dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's like the, the setup. Uh, yeah, that's I, why they didn't have a lot of the weapons because they were going to trade it to this fool. Yeah, and I do like yeah. That's when the, the sticky leader. He has a name. I forget. It's like a lizard or something, right? Scaly. Because oh, he had a yes. unique mutation yes. that looked like scales. Which yes. they, they they go in and they mention it. It's yeah. not actual scales. It just looks like scale. Yeah. Um. And he's like, I'm gonna go to get that girl while everyone's dying. And they're like, Are you sure? Because we're in the middle of a fight. Yeah. Um. And it gets pretty when they get into the Baron and all that stuff. Uh. Again, and his head honcho guys into, you know state of masochistic kind of stuff yeah yeah that that part of, <laughs> i gotta admit i was like damn when i was reading that book i was like man yeah it, it, it's like i appreciate when a story will do that you know it's, i don't you know it, it is just like oh but in that but but again it it, it shows how real mm -hmm. he's making this deathlands it, it, there's no more rules there's no more you know, there's morality, but the majority of the people, if man is left to his own devices, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. All throughout time, it's it's shown that. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, the, the issue is never that I I am like, oh, it's edgy for edgy's sake. I haven't really felt that outside of like Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, I don't know if you played that game, but you get a gun, which is which is Shadow funny now. Hedgehog. But when I was a kid, I thought I that was the I coolest that thing. Game. You get like you get assault rifles and shotguns, and, and you're like, a hedgehog. Yeah, and they're like the oh. cuts. The trailer shows you like standing over a soldier's body, and you're like about to kill them. Like, oh, jeez. Yeah, no, but cute. maybe that was the whole point, right? Because uh, it's a cute little hedgehog. Maybe you should play that game. We'll, uh, we'll get a stream going yeah, for that Shadow sounds, the Hedgehog. That sounds cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 I haven't felt that I it, that it's edgy. I yeah. just felt that it was raw. That's why I use that word. Until I can think yeah. of a better word, I'm like, yeah, this author is like going to be honest with this setting and not um, not cut away from the gruesomeness. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I think that was a little bit different, but I understand what you were saying earlier, is that um, I think the romance between them w was sped up. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was kind of very, you know, here's this guy that doesn't trust anybody. Doesn't even tell the guy he's been working with six years what the F he does. Um, but I'm going to fall in love with this chicken slammer, you know, probably 10 minutes into meeting her, you know, I mean, I mean and I guess that's realistic, but I yeah. just didn't, that's the only thing that kind of bugged me Yeah, it did. because he trusted her that much in that little bit of time. But yet he, there were things about Trader that, and they even said in the book that he's been with Trader for six years and there's certain things that Trader doesn't even know and half the things he gets you know he, he it's assumption and he barely even knows this guy yeah which i did like the um the way the traitor is depicted where he, you know he has he has a, a, a you know a cough sickness yeah and he's just chugging mouthwash all the time to throwing like, up blood and yeah. everything like that but doesn't so, want to go see a doctor yeah they're like you're gonna you want to have something he's like no i'm i'm good yeah. i just say because they're all hacks and yeah. you'll die i mean i could get it it's like civil war doctor 
you know, but in Deathlands, right? You see those stories. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, like maggots were like considered a good thing. Yeah. We actually use maggots now. Still? Yes. Is that what you're doing over there? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, uh, Every once in a while we'll get maggots, but um, they're used for wound care. <laughs> but the thing about it is they're, they're bred in a sterile environment. Mm. So the fly itself is sterile, like, like clean wise. Yeah. That is the weird thing. So about- then they'll put them in there and then they'll put a bandage over it. Because the maggots will only eat the dead flesh. flesh. Yeah, that that's so weird. I'm and like, the rotten flesh. Well, you're like, oh, the, they're, they're really, like, that yeah. is, if they were colorful, people would be like, this is a magical gift from Gaia. That's such a great idea. Why don't we make them colorful and then do a clear bandage? So when you walk around in a club, the neon light hits it, and you see all these like glowing maggots. What an dude, idea, dude! You paint painting maggots and for medical stuff. I'm oh, like, what uh, a great idea! All right, we got yeah. we got our post apocalyptic techno yeah. magnets. <laughs> techno maggots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. There we go. That could be a, that could be a band. All right, now remember it was recorded, so it's a verbal patent right here. Yeah, so it's so we, we, we already don't own see it. any copies the, yeah. of colored maggots and nightclubs. You know, you people are we're going to we're going to go in, we're going to steal their ideas for techno maggots. Yes. You might see it, you know, you never know, you might see it on Amazon. Yeah, coming soon. Yeah. Um, Alibaba might have it. You can buy it on Alibaba. <laughs> um I do like the um, the rescue. That so we have uh Yeah, I do, I do like the way they do that. Um I, I, and I, that gets going fast. That's something I always look for. Like I hate it in team stories where everyone does not contribute what they're like what they should based on yes. the rules I'm aware of. Um and I, I do like that like he comes in to rescue her. He puts up a fight and it's like, Oh yeah, had he not done that, things would have gone bad. She yeah. jumps in and helps him and it it didn't feel like either one was useless. Right. Um, right. if, if you know, I, I feel like, you know, another story could have easily had him like, she just like rescues herself and she's yeah. like, I didn't need you, but it was like, no, he helped for sure. That was a tough enemy and it needed to be caught off guard. And one person can't do that. Yeah. Because some writers would take advantage of that situation to show, you know, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, you know, this person, this one character, we've set up this threat. Here's their leader. Yeah. He's, he's, here's him being the right. ultimate like tough guy. Right. Or writers, you won't even, they, there's a strong group of six. But every fight scene, it's only one person. Yeah, there's that fighter and the rest. You know. And then, then, then they all meet up. Hey, where you been? <laughs> yeah. And well, I, you know, just almost dying. Um, they did a good job of that because it was almost like they were building the relationship between them two. Yeah. I, I really think that that's what yeah. they were doing. That's yeah. That's that's a. That didn't hit me until you said that. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Again, it's not that it's an unbelievable relationship they have especially with the setting they're in. Yeah. You are just like, I would have liked them to, you know, get to know each other a little more. And Ryan, and Ryan is, it's funny. We talked about Star Trek earlier, but Ryan is the captain Kirk of Deathlands. Mm. I mean, in all these books, he's always having chicks wanting to go at it. I swear. Like captain. Well, Kirk. he's like the hottest guy in the wasteland. Oh yeah. From, from what I can tell, he's the fact that he's like uh healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, that's true. He's just like, he's up there. I think he like shaves at all. So they're like, what's this? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the one eye thing and all that stuff. You he know. doesn't work in the mines all day. No. Well, because he comes from a rich family. Mm. Well, yeah, that'll do it. And the way. Yeah. In, and any, I, in any world, that'll yeah. that'll do it. And I forget what book, but they go into his history. That I do. I don't remember what book, though, but they go into. Because um, there's very few times that they go into the South. One of them is, I think. uh, uh Jesus, bloodlines. That yeah, would, yeah. Bloodlines. That's a good one. Vampires and stuff. Yeah, cool. cover. Yeah, they're, the covers are always like people's like lower body. Like it never shows yeah. the head, and then like. Now some of them do. There's a few books oh. that actually do, uh, but the majority of the artists that started doing them did them all. Like, oh, see, that's that his whole body. Mm. Yeah, I mean the covers just scream '80s action oh, movie yeah and I, I i love it. the soundtrack is definitely synth music and oh yeah, yeah. and just to, yeah we'll get back to the story it is i i i think it's like one of the best like story structures and it works it definitely works yeah. for a video game but it's just yeah. like uh you know we did this little side quest to help people you got a new companion but because of that we don't have the shipment we need to do this trade that was gonna like set us up yeah so now we got to figure out how we're gonna handle that yeah and i think the 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 deathlands audio audio version right i've read book and listen um it's really cool 
I mean, some of the some of the the, the accents are a little, you know, overboard. You know, hurry, hey, yeah. you know, watch that over there. That's good. I, I was <laughs> I was there. That, that, I I remember that character. Um, but uh, but overall, it's 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 great. I, I mean, like I said, uh, I know that a lot of Deathlands people are getting it in audio because they're actually releasing. And I think I could be wrong, but they released um, the last ones were audio like they're, you know, but they're recording them and stuff. So, um, yeah. And audible just started releasing them. So they're on graphic audio. All of them. Some of them are on audible and then audible just started releasing like three packs. So you can get the first three for one token, which is like, uh, that's a, oh. that's a steal. I can't, yeah, you can't go wrong. That's with worth it. it. Absolutely. You can't go wrong with it. Um, and like I said, it kind of brings the character to life outside of your mind and they do a really good job on explaining uh, the characters in there mm -hmm. and because I'm an artist and, 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 um, and I, I see them totally you know, how I see them, but they do a pretty good job at explaining what these things look like. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that I think is, is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and especially cause like what I liked about it is you don't even realize what the story is until the end. Yeah. Because you don't find out what causes the other 40 books, how those could possibly exist. Yeah. Because at the end, it's it's sort of like, oh, this was the prologue. Exactly. So, um, you know, you have this big fight, you know, in the, in the control of the city and they uh, rescue everybody. Um, and then it gets into this weird, like, like doors kind of thing. Doors? Like the doors. Like the band? Gym. Yeah. Really? I I'll explain. <laughs> so you're like, I'm looking, really? I'm looking forward to that. Yes. So, you know, after the whole thing, we know that the trader, he's sick. So he, uh, he doesn't want anyone to take care of him. So they run across the Indian. You remember the Indian? Mm -hmm. And here's this Indian sitting across there, you know, and I can almost hear an eagle in the end when he went off with him. Do you remember that part? Oh, in the movie? Yeah. It, where he's just like, in the, yeah, yeah, in the auto book, he goes off with this. The last thing the guys see is him going off with this Indian. And I thought, man, what's that about? I mean, it was kind of cool. But oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. like what What was that? Like, don't, the, you don't. Uh, yeah. Just shut up. Shut now, up. Now, people that have read the books, of course, there's some really cool, like Stone Face. And I think it's called Stone Face. Um, that's really good. Uh, has to deal with Native Americans and stuff. Um, that re kind of take over the land, which it's is a, awesome. I always like that in a thing because in a post apocalypse scenario, most people don't have any knowledge for surviving. Yeah, so it is just like oh, those tribes absolutely would. Oh yeah, they would. They would. They were all right. Well, yeah, we've been waiting for those. Yeah, um, knowing how to hunt, ha be having the equipment to hunt. Aborigines. Yeah. Those, those, nice. those groups would I, I you just assume they would take over once yeah once our gas runs out in like a week where i go well that was it yeah our main adventure was our gas yeah i've been listening to a lot of zombie uh audiobooks on uh what do i listen to oh never um, mind just other sources other sources other sources but i was watching videos on youtube oh you were on yeah. youtube interesting yeah, I was. you get entertainment off youtube i did oh. um i actually learned a lot but curious um it's funny because you don't really, you don't really think about that. The all these writers think about it, so they think about all these different things, and you're like going, "Oh crap! Yeah, I would so die. I would so starve. Mm -hmm. How am I going to make water? How am I going to do that?" So it's pretty funny. Yeah, the fact that you can't just drink water is like that's. Just, I know like, what. I know. <laughs> like no, if you drink from the stream, you might get diarrhea and like die that way. Yeah, like, more oh, likely. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, but but back to Deathlands. So what all you guys know, but maybe the people that don't, we, we didn't do a whole like review without spoiler on this because, um, in the end, um, I'm thinking the majority of the people that might watch this have already read books, read the Deathlands books. So I wanted to make it more of a, you know, just kind of fun thing. Um, but if you haven't, the only reason we didn't do a spoiler is because there's, there's 182 books. And if you wanted to get into the series, it's kind of important to know. Yeah. Because I get like it works as an introduction to the world it, it very it well. Um, but it is an introduction to the world. Yeah. So, and remember we were talking about those teleporters and the time trawl thing earlier. Um, so our group end up dismantling the Mist Monster, which was just a... Uh, it was a security device. A for, military Roomba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and they dismantle it and they end up making it in this thing running away from Native Americans that are trying to kill them. Um, and Doc, which has been there before, of course, he's the one who's been time traveling. Um, he knows what this chamber is and tells all these people, let's go in this chamber. It's a teleporting thing. Oh, yeah, because they're being chased. They're being chased. So, like, they got into the military base. They're like, they're coming up. We need to yeah. do something. And there was no way out. So they get in this thing, close the door, and all of a sudden, this mist starts coming up from the ground. They feel sick. Next thing you know, they're in another place. And if you remember, the other place wasn't a good place. All the carbon monoxide and all that stuff. Mm. So there's these uh, teleporting things in all these bases. And that's what makes them, that's why it would be such a good series. Because every book, the majority of them, they get into this thing, getting away or wanting to move on. And then all of a sudden they're somewhere else. Brand new story, brand new people, brand new things. It's almost like the inverse of Quantum Leap. Yes. Where they're the like, dirty e- version. Yeah. Well, the like dirty that. version of each, Quantum Leap. Each, each one, they went to a different uh, portal. Yeah. Yeah. Stargate wasn't that much. They didn't do it every episode. Stargate. I didn't watch Stargate. What? I didn't watch Star Trek or Stargate or Star what? Wars. Or... What? I'm saving it. Oh, I'm saving geez, it. Louise. I All wanna... right, I won't even go there. I didn't. I never got around to him. Like, I might as well save it for something. No. Well, I got something to tell you. They have the radio show versions of Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi um, that you can listen to other places. Hmm. You yeah. can see previews on YouTube. Oh, so if you just look it up on YouTube, you could find a preview. Yeah, of it? and then they'll just show you pictures of it. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's it's the radio version, so they do all the voices. What you like? Yes, it's uh, actually good. I I really was listening to Empire Strikes Back. Hmm. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, hey, because it's like yeah, there's novelizations of every movie, and then yeah, you know, who the author's job, to my understanding, is to fix all the plot holes. So oh can, my gosh! So, so someone can say, "Well, in the book, they explain." Dude, yeah, but some of them are brutal. Like I just, I just heard Jaws, and I'm like, "Wow!" And those who've heard Jaws and seen the movie, you know what I mean by say, "Wow," because I mean, there's some pretty big changes that Spielberg made. We might have a movie, yeah. uh, a book section. Yeah, and, so. and let us know if you want us to do that because that would be fun if we did a book versus movie, uh, like a. Uh, yeah, John Holland dies in the end. What is that? John dies. At, John you say, died. were you thinking Tom Holland dies at the that's end? What I, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway. Yeah, that like, which John dies at the end. One of the things. Well, like that, that would be that. cool to see do that one in a movie. But, but let us know. Mm-hmm. So, But um, you would love, I think you would uh, love Deathlands if you like anything that has to do with, um, it, uh, it's not a zombie thing, but the end of the world and things like that. Real right down your alley. Brutal death world post apocalypse, like setting yeah. with monsters and mutants and psychic ability. Yeah. Like a, the the perfect playground for a video game to exist. Oh, in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You get to pick your class. Are you a psyker? Are you a, are you a, yeah. are you a muty? Are you a this? Or if you're a muty too, your perks are just your mutation going up. Oh, not only that. You remember when they're in the bar, and there's a cyclops there mm. has a mutation and he has one eye and he's talking to Ryan. And Ryan's afraid to look at him because there's, there's myths that they have, a, that some of them will have like a laser eye <laughs> that you remember that I could shoot a laser and kill you out of their eye. And I was like, that, that's why I love the book so much. That's why I love the series so much because it's like, dude, when you start getting into it, they start explaining where some of these things are coming from and how they're mutated and, and, and the different mutations and man, it's just freaking cool, dude. It is yeah. cool. It is, yeah. It's a, it's it's a good setting. If you're into, if you're like, if you just played Fallout or Metro, especially, and you're like, I want something else, yeah, like this. Um, this scratches that itch. The, yeah. The only thing that I was like, that's a little weird, was when they're when they um the romance has happened, yeah. and then like near near the end of the book, the they'll just mention. At the beginning of the story, by the way, they like they totally hooked up three times, and I'm like, okay, yeah, and uh, you know yeah. the story just happens, yeah. and then they'll be like, oh, and they got they they spent the night together, if you know what I mean. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah sure, dude. Uh, and they haven't taken a shower in two weeks. Yeah, no, they take a shower. No, oh, do they? Do they have room? I think they do. I don't think. Oh, I think they like go to like yeah. it's like a special event. The war wag has a shower, I think. But anyway, yeah, that that was the only time I'm like, what? What do you? I know the romance part of it was a trip, and every one of these books has similar things, um, but I don't think that it takes 
I don't think that it takes away from everything else that's cool. No. At least to me. Not not a, not in the least. Yeah, it wasn't even bad. It was just like, all right. Yeah. It, was, it would be just, you know, it just felt like, you know, someone would tell you that. Like, by the way, I did this. Like, I didn't ask. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it's just, it's like, if it was more descriptive, because it, it, there is just a, a flat out, you know, scene that's described. And I'm like, yeah. okay, like, I, I don't have an issue with, with, yeah. with that. I'm like, all right, yeah, here's like a depiction of that, like, honestly and earnestly. And I'm like, it's, you know, it's a nice depiction of it. But then after that, they just say like, oh, yeah, they did it. They, they, they did yeah. it a few times. Like, yeah, I mean, they do get into a little bit. But, but yeah, it's not, everything else is just vague. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I like the action. I like, like, um, the way it hints at things and how it, how it hints at different things differently. It's like, you know, here's this monster. It's not yeah. even, oh, that's not a monster. Like, oh, I thought it was because I was given a window into these characters who didn't know anything. Yeah. Sort of the locals who grew up here and how they understand the world. And then people who are like, oh, if you have access to these things, it's actually a lot less scary. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a trip because if you go online, you see there's so many Deathlands fans. Uh, I'm a fan on, on Facebook. On, on, there's a Deathlands site. And some of these guys, man, will like post like what the, what the war wag would look like. Mm. That's like, dude, it's just like, you know, that was, I was just a little excited there. But yes, uh, it's cool to see, especially when, like I said, I've, I've read so many books and I'm so into it. And, and what's funny is half of the things that, um, that I liked after this have to do with this the reason I like fallout so much mm. is because of, because of reading these books, the reason I like, well, I've always liked zombies, but the, 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 but it's like zombie fallout. Oh. I mean, I just, it's just way cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, if it, it does everything, so you if you read all of it, do you like you get to be like, oh, it turns out I I don't like za vampires that much, or I, yeah, it like, turns out I do like, like samurai stuff. Like, let me give you an example, which is one of I always give it as an example because it's the coolest freaking thing. So in one of the books, um, they run into this scientist guy, and he is practicing time trolling, right? How Doc got there. Mm -hmm. So what he's doing is he sending these monsters that suck blood in the past to see if this thing works mm. and you start getting it. You're like, wait, shit, this is Puerto Rico. That's the Chupacabra. He, I mean, and it's linking it to our time. So there's this whole thing about Chupacabras and there's this beast out there sucking blood and, you, and, and it's related to the book where you're like, damn it it's that guy sending <laughs> sending him back a time bastard so anytime you encounter a monster it was that guy he sent it could, it could be it could be something in deathlands yeah i i think that was just brilliant i think some of those things that they do like 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 you have this one which is great you guys that know this is uh uh keepers of the sun that is a good one they actually go back they transfer into japan and japan is being run by these like old school samurai guys a great great one you know uh this one also is this is the one in the south where vampires it was good uh um, oh, he's holding red hair yeah so there, there's so many of them stone face which is really good that has to do with the national monument um and there is a uh underground base in that in the the heads of the president and they're trading there's a like a android kind of cyborg guy that's trading with the indians because the Indians run that whole thing, mm. and this elevator comes down from, I think it's a, I think it's a, Lincoln's nose. It comes down and it brings supplies to the Indians, and he takes bodies and people and he experiments with them. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So, which, uh, if which, is there like one that like sticks out to you more out of these? You know, there's so there's so so many of them as you guys know. Um, oh man, Twilight okay. Children. What's that? What's uh places a trail in that involving like giant bugs no ah. um let's see get a fruit's good crossways is good you guys know that oh shadow world is good what's shadow world because that one has him holding a futuristic gun yeah it's it's read the back of that you'll love that and let me see if i could find oh zero city the hellscape of a po no that's is that the summary for the entire series 
It kind of goes, but then it goes into Ryan Cawdor. That's yeah, yeah, that's the, that's our guy. That's our Snake Plissken. It's a true warrior of death hunts, fighting for survival in a bizarre, freakish world. But now, beyond the unseen perils, a new threat emerges. Invaders arrive from a parallel Earth. Yeah, where the nuke, <laughs> and the term they use is nuke cost for nuclear holocaust. Yeah. They call it a nuke cost that never happened. That's why I wanted you to read it. That is interesting. It, 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 dude, that you guys that know Deathlands know Deathlands. So, I mean, I can't even tell you if there's a, a, a best book that I have um, in mind because I see them all. This one's a good one. This one takes place like in, it's like glass and, and snow and stuff. That's a good one. And every now and then on these covers, you do get a little, you'll get a shot of like the monsters or animals that exist now. Right. And it's like rabid. But if you look at the majority of them, we'll have. There's that, always a little flower. A little daisy. Some of the, the majority of them do. There. That's a giant raccoon he's fighting. Let's see right there. There's a Death daisy. Death on big old flowers. There's your daisy. But that's a fun uh, thing to like. Like I said, I, I mean, I would love, you know, uh, next time you guys, uh, if you want to actually chat about it during a live, I would love it um, because there's not many Deathland fans that, of course, I run into. Uh, the guy that I bought the majority of these books from, uh, you know, he had them and sold them to me. And and he was just like, yeah, I got these books. And man, as you can see, I've never gotten rid of them. I, they sit in a box and I loan them out here and there, and uh, which I shouldn't have because I some of them I didn't get them back. Mm -hmm. But um, but I still pick them up sometimes, and I still will start reading them because I'm like, I remember part of a story, or I remember something, and I'm like, oh man, I got to read that book again, or I'll see a video game, or I'll play Fallout, and I'm like, oh, I got to read that again. Did you ever so, watch a boy and his dog? Um, a boy and his dog. Does his dog not have any legs? No, it's got legs. Oh. No, that dog's got legs. Doesn't the dog wouldn't have a name? Uh oh. Because it wouldn't come to you anymore. I don't remember his name. Oh. <laughs> a boy and his dog. No, I have not. Um, I think that's what, fa I, you know, yeah, it came before the first Fallout. The very first one. And it's, really? um, it's one of the OG stories. Like, it, a lot of things are, like, based off that. Um, and that, that's a setting where, um, the main character is not a hero and like, he sees like a, a, you know, a family being attacked and he's just like, nope, they're still, yep. I have to wait. I have to wait till they're done. Okay. And then, you know, he sees like the dead body. He's like, oh, I didn't have to, he didn't have to cut them up. And it, it is like, wow. it, it is what I like about it is just like, he's already grown up in this world. Yeah. So it's all, you see like how like brutal things are. But the thing is, um, he was like one of the last generations so like he was part of like the world before the nukes happened and his dog is psychic wow. and like or like just to him though so it was like an implant they were given so like he can hear the dog's thoughts and the dog can understand him so they like they talk and it's like it's like oh. a it's like a i want popcorn and like he has to like negotiate with oh. it and stuff and there's like there's vaults where they did like experiments oh, wow. And there's, um, you know, they're hiding out and they're like, oh no, be quiet. It's a glowing one. And then you see like green radiation go by wow. and it's like all these things from fallout were like, from wow, that's the, crazy. Yeah. So like Mad Max that. and a boy and his dog, if, oh. if there's post apocalypse, Mad it's Max those things. Yeah. Mad Max is just, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother show. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I, um, I hope you actually go out and if you have never read these books, Start giving it a shot, but I do say something. It's like uh, it's like being twenty one and getting your first tattoo. It, you'll not want to stop, even though I don't have tattoos. Yeah, I don't either. No, I have a big one on my back of the Firebird from Smoking the Bandit. But yeah, I have a dragon. Really, I have a rainbow dragon on my back. Rainbow. Yeah. I'm like it says live free or die hard. Live free or die hard. I like that. Is that from My Little Pony? Uh, yeah, I assume so. Oh. I think it's the slogan from Die Hard. You're bro boy? What is that? Brony? Brony. No, I'm not. Not a brony. That's, uh... I thought that was from a guy from Melrose Place or something. Brony? That yeah. sounds like something you would just call someone. Right? Like, brony. we already have Jabroni. Yeah. There's Jabroni and Brony. Yeah. And Baloney. Baloney, which is what we call politicians. Yeah. Macaroni. Macaroni, which is good. Yeah. You got all sorts of Rony. <laughs> Rony, Rony, Rony. All right, guys. So, all right. Um, any any other highlights? I think I no. I think I think it was great. I, I I can never talk enough about these, and maybe we'll actually like do the 
the show on sci-fi and read the book and go over that. Cause I think it'd be fun if mm-hmm. people want to see that and we can rag on both the, the movie and the book. I don't like, well, I'd never really rag on, it. but you're going to get it honest here. And there's things that even though I love this series so much, there's things that suck. And I went over those. And that, yeah. That's in any, anything like nothing's yeah. ever perfect or, yeah. or always hits the notes that you want a thing to hit. Correct. Correct. No. So I think I'm good. Yeah. I hope everyone had a good time. Good fight scenes, a good thing. If you like, you like Fallout, you like Metro, check this out. Yeah, yeah. The best, au- best produced audio book that's out there. Oh, yeah, de- definitely. Yeah, and get used to the voices, because in the voices, they do it all the time. And everyone's dying, yes. Yeah, so everyone's everyone's <laughs> raspy old pioneers. Yeah. <laughs> the lady at the bar. Ryan, what you doing, Ryan? <laughs> It really, it really helped me get into that world because I'm like, oh yeah, Ryan being the only healthy guy in this setting definitely well, means true. everyone would want to be with him. That, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Because everyone he, is jacked up somehow. Yeah, he's just like he's just a, a guy, which is like so. Everyone's like, who is that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and really fast before the end, what about that one chick? Yeah, she doesn't show up in a lot of other books. Uh, the one gunner on the on the thing where she's like talking that guy through getting stabbed. Yeah. And getting his throat cut. That was crazy. Where this guy is, Ryan is killing this guy, and she's talking him through it. She's like, yeah, you're trying to scream now, but you can't, because your throat's getting cut, and you're drowning in your own blood. I was like, what? Yeah, that was good. I, I, like, uh, I like when characters do stuff like that. That was pretty good. I forgot yeah. about that scene. But yeah. anyway. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a very fun action yes. uh, series. Totally recommend it. Yeah. So I think that's it. Yep. So I think... That's, That's the, the end, end of, of that, that chapter. chapter. All right, guys. See you again. Yeah. We'll fade out.